Hey, what's going on there, folks? Thanks for checking back in here on this wonderful Wednesday night, July 17, 2024. It is the Earthmaster here, about 11 p.m. California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 5.2 earthquake in uh, the red flag out here around the uh, just south of the Philippines area here. One of the latest quakes on the uh, globe. Starting to get a little bit of migration of activity here along the Kermadec Trench stretching towards New Zealand. We are still lacking some decent earthquake activity here between this uh, uh, Papua New Guinea area over to the Fiji region. It's been a uh, seismic, seismically uh, absent area for oh, about 10 days or so. We, uh, we did see a little bit of deep activity here couple days ago but seriously we should see some larger earthquake activity bumping up in that region soon uh, getting a, a little bit of swarming going on up here across the Kuro Kamachaka that earthquake activity uh, well not really showing up here on the USGS map they they're showing a 4.2 uh, about 83 kilometers deep but we're getting uh, some other reports here from the EMSC that there's more earthquake activity in that region so continue to keep an eye on the uh, northwestern edge here of the Pacific Plate. California, been kicking up here a little bit. Uh, kick back up the uh, earthquake watch for now because we are seeing an increasing event take place out here across the southern portion of the state of California. Got a swarm event down here off the, uh, well, it's in between the Elsinore Fault, little section here of the Elsinore Fault and the um, San Jacinto Fault Zone. Got a little bit of swarming going on there. We did see a, a three-pointer stir up there, if I remember right, a 3.5, followed up by a handful of other smaller quakes in that area. Let's bring up the 2.5 map and above to take a look at what's going on here. Uh, there's that 3.5 earlier, 2.8 further up north, 2.7 back down south. A little bit of bouncing back and forth here between the, uh, uh, the 2.5 and above earthquakes. So... Uh, definitely quite active out here, specifically within this region of the state. The San Andreas Fault, for now, pretty quiet. Further up north around the Ridgecrest area, getting a handful of smaller quakes up there. And the Bay Area, uh, aside from the Cobb Mountain area up north, most of this movement here from earlier this morning, where they did see a 3.3 just outside of Gilroy. About 8 o'clock this morning or so along the Calaveras Fault Zone. Northern California, pretty quiet, aside from one little lonesome earthquake here, 24 kilometers deep into the Cascadia subduction zone. So let's go see what's going on there real quick. 107 epicenters of tremor here along the Cascadia. Getting a little bit here in Northern California as well. That could be why we've seen um, a little bit of deeper event uh, activity take place here earlier today with that 1.6 that's fairly deep there 24 kilometers deep but it's just upstream from where the trimmer takes place <clears throat> which is roughly about 35 uh, to 45 kilometers deep there in that area so a little bit of uptick out here we haven't completely gone away with the uh, epicenter of trimmer counts out here but uh, continue to keep an eye on things for sure uh, the rest of the pacific northwest fairly quiet Las Vegas area, well, there's been a little swarming going on out here across the area of the Nevada desert near Furnace Creek. Uh, actually, it's about 31 kilometers east-northeast there of that area. Uh, near Skeleton Hills, there's a lot of interesting names out here. Quite a few fault systems out here as well. Uh, but this earthquake activity, generally light, very small microquake activity out there in the desert outside of Las Vegas uh, Yellowstone National Park, not a whole lot going on there, but I do want to double check things here. And uh, looks like we're getting ready to reset here to the UTC time uh, of the next day. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity here, at least on the maps that I can see. I believe this is some type of... Uh, I believe those were the thunderstorms that popped through earlier uh, in the afternoon time period. And I can double check that just to verify... Uh, through the windy map up here across uh, the area. Let's see what we got about six hours or so ago. 
Looks like it was confined mainly across this area. Oh, I already see it, see? Look at that. About six hours or so ago. Got a, a pretty decent cluster of thunderstorms here uh, in that area. It didn't really show up across all the uh, the rest of the seismos, but uh, uh, just mainly um, in Norris Junction and the Parker Peak area. About six hours ago, that's, got, that's what you're going to see there on the seismograph stations there as far as thunderstorm activity showing up on these uh, graphs. Pretty crazy, right? But uh, a lot of times, you know, we'll see all sorts of stuff showing up on there. But as far as earthquake activity, pretty quiet out there across Yellowstone for now. Uh, the rest of the country out here, a handful of smaller microquakes. There's that 5.2 coming in to the Philippine Trench. About 51 kilometers deep or so. We did see a pretty deep earthquake uh, down into the Java Sea, underneath the Java Sea, 551 kilometers. Goodness, super deep earthquake there. Um, there's a whole lot going on here. We've gone absolutely quiet here across the area that generally sees a bunch of movement, and uh, it's been eerily quiet. Now we're getting uh, a lot of deeper activity being triggered out here. A little bit of surface adjustment as well with that 5.2. Uh, could be an interesting night. I still expect this area to... Uh, fill in in kind of a big fashion here once it gets go uh, once it uh, starts to move roughly about Papua New Guinea eastward here along this plate boundary we'll keep an eye on that region uh, the rest of the model of the globe out here looks fairly decent a little bit of activity stirring up here in the Baja California area south of the border and also further down along the tip here uh, a couple of three stirring up so We'll keep an eye here on Southern California. It is being amplified out here right now in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, space weather activity, well, not a whole lot in terms of flaring right now. We're getting a little bit of sea flare activity here from this area of interest. You can see it on the UV filter ray here. Got some sea flaring going on from 3751. Uh, That's going to be this area right here. About the only region that I see... Uh, that shows some growth and some complexity out there within that magnetic structure that it harbors. So a lot of intermixing here of the colors, indicating some complexity within that ma magnetic core. So keep an eye there on 3751. Overall threat has dropped a little bit. 15% chance for X-flare. M-flare at 65%. C-flare around 99% chance or so. No major roars in the forecast and the beautiful moon there at 90% full. Uh, I did post some pictures earlier here on my uh, social media accounts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I was using a Nikon P900. It's a zoom cam. And uh, goodness, that, I've had that camera for a couple of years, and I still think that is one of my best investments there. I love that camera. It could get some excellent zoom shots for sure. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, did you guys hear about this fireball? It was a, basically a meteor that went over New York City, uh, I believe this was last night, and uh, in the daytime. Not too often do you see a daytime event take place here, but this is from the um, fireball.amsmeteors.org, and uh, this was sent in here from Mark K., it looks like. And there it is. This was just one picture. There's a couple videos in there as well. Um, right over New York City. And uh, it's pretty crazy if you think about it. Quite a few folks reported seeing that as well. Again, not too often do we see a daytime event out there. But it took place over a broad area of highly populated region. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy here. Um, let me see here. See what they got here on the Google, Google Earth page. We'll check that out here in a second. Um, far as hurricane activity goes, well, there's a, a little bit of development going on out here in the Pacific. 20% chance of a cyclone formation here in the next 48 hours. But it, it doesn't look all that likely. We'll continue to keep an eye on that, though. Disturbance 1. Uh, the Central Pacific, aside from that one, pretty quiet. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, nothing expected here in the next 48 hours, so... Again, we're entering into a, uh, an interesting little period here of quietness out there in the tropics. But I'm sure that uh, it's not going to last for long. We're going to be uh, 
getting a little bit deeper into the hurricane season here. So uh, let me give give this thing a second here and see why this. I'm not for sure why this isn't loading. Okay, there's a the path that. Uh, wow, <laughs> that I guess people are seeing it from. That's a little interesting there. Uh, either way, you know, it was over a highly populated region, so it's going to be uh, going to be reported by quite a few folks out there. There's lots of asteroids out there, folks. Let me tell you, <laughs> there's many, and uh, you know, NASA does keep track of a lot of the uh, potentially damaging asteroids that could come across um, the Earth's orbit, but you know, they can't account for every every single one. Um, this one wasn't that big from what I hear. It was supposed to be about a foot wide little asteroid uh, burned up into the atmosphere there. Traveling at about 34,000 miles per hour. So it was quick. And um, so they don't really pay attention to these little ones that are out here. But I guarantee you there's uh, space out here is, oh goodness, a very dangerous area. A lot of uh, potential asteroids out here and little rocks floating about. Um, but for now, you know, it's uh, nothing major going on. I did check out the next five asteroid approaches here. Uh, we're supposed to have one uh, 90 foot, 96 foot wide airplane size asteroid coming in without within about 484,000 miles. That's pretty safe there. That, that wasn't the asteroid that... Um, was seen over New York City there today. None of these were. Otherwise, <laughs> we'd be hearing about it in a big fashion. Trust me. A 96-foot 96 96-foot 96 asteroid? Yeah. That wouldn't be good. So, uh, yeah. A little excitement in the sky, right? I'm always looking up at the sky. Otherwise, you miss out on those cool events. Probably didn't hit the ground. More likely burned up completely. Uh, so we'll continue to watch uh, California out there for now. You know, there's a, a lot going on out here. Bouncing back and forth here. Um, between roughly about the northern half here of the Pacific Plate. Not so much down here. This is a little worrisome because, I, you know, it's almost always seen earthquake activity here. Across the Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area. And that's just gone... Completely, completely quiet. So uh, we'll do, we'll just see what happens here in the hours and the days ahead. Um, Hawaii, I don't think much has changed out here. I know, kind of skipped over Hawaii. Been watching this little trail of activity out there across the Upper East Rift Zone. I don't think we've seen anything major going on here yet. Uh, but let's check out the um, the graph out here. See what's going on here in terms of inflation. deformation right inflation there's a little jump up there earlier going down slightly here in terms of inflation but uh, overall you know that's a pretty significant jump right there it looks like here in the last uh, last few hours steady as she goes uphill that's inflation going on steady definitely so we'll continue to watch that we are at an elevated level there across the Kilauea volcano just a matter of time here before we see something break through or we see a magma intrusion off here. Uh, I'm leaning more towards off towards the uh, the east rift zone potentially, or some fissure event taking place up here across this region. But we just don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not a fortune teller, and um, we just have to watch and see what happens. See what Kilauea volcano has in store. Right. That's all we can do right now. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Seismograph stations there look uh, pretty quiet. A little spike there on Mount St. Helens, but that's a super-duper small earthquake. And um, I'm going to leave it at about like that right there, as far as the seismos go. So we got Barrett, Chile. Barrett, by the way, is down there in Southern California. Petrolia in Northern California, Japan, New Zealand. Mount St. Helens, obviously, Yellowstone National Park, Lake Yellowstone, and Hot Caves, Hawaii is that live seismograph station. 
We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Stay safe, everyone.